Welcome to the Stop COVID Deaths webinar series brought to you by the University of the Philippines. The Stop COVID Deaths shorts make it easier for you to go to the presentations that you are interested in. I'm Dr. Raymond Sarmiento, Director of the National Telehealth Center. And I'm Dr. Susie Pineda Mercado, Adjunct Faculty of the National Telehealth Center. Together, Together let's, let's stop, stop COVID, COVID deaths. deaths. We'll be talking about breakthrough infections, but uh, kaagad in the title page pa lang, I'd like you all to remember na vaccines reduce risk for severe breakthrough infections. No? So um, I, I'm sure we are all on the same page that the COVID pandemic has affected every aspect of our lives. And actually the number of confirmed cases and the number of lives taken by this virus is really, really phenomenal. No? So what I'll do is I'll just get some uh, very important landmark documents from the United States, yan, from UK, from Israel, from Indonesia, at saka from the Philippines. Inisip ko how I will uh, talk about breakthrough infections kasi parang ang dami-daming information. So that's what I'll do. No? So uh, to review, parang the USA is number one, the ba, sa number of total confirmed cases. And um, the United Kingdom also has a lot, over 6 million confirmed cases. We're very... For both of them, they uh, have been using mostly Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. Israel, also Pfizer vaccines, no, with uh, just a little bit over 1 million confirmed cases as of yesterday. So I wanted to look at what, what the experience was of uh, Indonesia who used a different set of uh, vaccines, uh, Sinovac primarily, and of course, zooming into our experience in the Philippines. So what are breakthrough infections? So sa Mentimeter, no, tinanong ni Raymond kanina. So to clarify, para our definitions are uh, just standardized, CDC would say that a vaccine breakthrough infection is defined as the detection of the virus for this particular COVID-19. It's the SARS-CoV-2 RNA or antigen in a respiratory specimen collected from a person at least 14 days after they have completed all recommended doses of an EUA-approved COVID-19 vaccine. So ang sagot, tamang sagot dun sa Mentimeter question ay two weeks. Okay? Now, um, so going to the experience in the U.S., I think this particular uh, paper that came out very recently this month actually on uh, breakthrough infections actually happened in Massachusetts outbreak. So it narrated what happened, what led to all of the breakthrough infections. So diba, when they started to uh, be able to rapidly give a lot of uh, vaccines to many of uh, its citizens, the United States actually uh, brought down a little bit the degree of restrictions that they had. So they allowed uh, people to go outside already without masks and have some kind of uh, public events uh, in different parts of the country. So in Massachusetts, there was an outbreak that was documented from July 3 to 17. Very brief lang to, two weeks. Tapos kinalangan na nila i-control kasi they detected them already following multiple large public events in a county in Massachusetts. So that particular county already had a vaccination coverage of 69%, very close to the 70% herd immunity that we are uh, all aspirating for. But nevertheless, they saw 469 COVID-19 cases. And from that pool of uh, COVID-19 cases, 74% were actually fully vaccinated cases. So it really brought a lot of concern for many of the people in the Massachusetts area. And when they looked at, uh, they studied uh, sampling of 133 patients who were able to submit their respiratory secretions for whole genome sequencing, they found out that 90% were already uh, because of the Delta variant. So we already see 
uh, what are the ingredients for this breakthrough infections? No? So very early on, the um, Massachusetts Department of Health was able to quickly detect and follow through the events that seemed to show that there was really a rise, a rapid rise in the number of cases. So parang nag-open sila, nag-invite sila ng mga public events, no? yung mga race, horses, yan, yan yung nangyari sa Massachusetts. And um, uh, quickly they were able to stop all of these events in, in an effort to control the ongoing outbreak. They found out that most of the cases were male, 87%, and the median age was 42. And the distribution of this were because yung mga public events nila invited mostly males and mostly this group of uh, middle-aged uh, people. The vaccines that were received were mostly Pfizer, Moderna, and Janssen, as indicated here. And 79% uh, reported signs and symptoms, uh, mostly cough, headache, sore throat, myalgia, and fever. They said that most of these were mild. Uh, only four of all of these cases had to be hospitalized. So mababang mababa yung hospitalization rate, which was only 1.2%, and no deaths were reported. But because of this, uh, they also uh, uh, tried to uh, compare um, the city values of, um, city value is a number we use in infectious disease. When we're trying to see just how infectious or communicable certain samples are. And usually the lower the city values are, the lower that means it only takes a few cycles for the machine to detect the, the virus in the sample. So ibig sabihin, mas madami na siyang virus. The viral burden is heavier when the city values are low. So you would see here that it didn't seem to matter kung unvaccinated or vaccinated yung individuals. No? So uh, the infectiousness looked the same. So what happened? Because of that very, part, uh, very important uh, outbreak and the subsequent uh, paper that came out from describing the experience, the CDC now recommends that back na sila sa wearing of the mask. So CDC started to recommend that even if you are fully vaccinated, if you are indoor in public settings, uh, you should wear masks. No? And that reverberated throughout the country. And uh, yun nga, uh, there are more and more um, concern about this particular breakthrough infections. And we should really all continue to update ourselves. So maraming maraming information, mostly in news items, but there's also a good resource from the CDC, MMWR, to keep ourselves updated. Okay. Let's go naman to the UK, the United Kingdom um, experience. This is the paper I thought would help us understand better uh, what's happening with the breakthrough infection. So these are effectiveness against the Delta variants. So this is a, this is a description of uh, symptomatic disease. The design of their study was a test negative design. And uh, the people who did this study uh, were associated with the Public Health England. Siya yung parang equivalent ng Department of Health natin. And you would see in this graph, they tried to map out um, the vaccine effectiveness for the alpha and the delta variant after the first dose and the second dose. And you would see na may malaking difference, no? So if we just receive the first dose, the protection is only around 30% to at most 50%. But it rises very significantly if we finish the recommended number of dosing. So although it doesn't match breakthrough infections, no. so don't get disheartened if you uh, get an infection in between the doses because that really happens because our level of protection is not yet full if we only stop at the first dose. We really should make every attempt to finish the 
uh, recommended number of doses. So here after the second dose, you would see that both for alpha and delta variants, the vaccines that this group of population received were effective up to 89, 79 to 89%. So the conclusion of this experience from UK is that there's high levels of vaccine effectiveness against symptomatic disease with the Delta variant. Uh, for if, if for their population received the Pfizer or the Astra COVID-19 vaccines. And um, that uh, there's reduced effectiveness if we only receive the first dose. So um, if you know of other people who might stop at the first dose or get disappointed because they got an infection after just the first dose, prod them to go and finish the second dose or the number of recommended doses. Okay. But then naman tayo sa Israel. No? So, so Israel, I really try to look for this... Uh, um, information about uh, what they experience as breakthrough infections because Israel actually um, is the number one in terms of uh, coverage for vac COVID-19 vaccines. And the report here um, narrates to us the experience of the largest medical center in Israel, which is the Sheba Medical Center. At the time they did this study, the vaccination coverage was already 91% for their hospital. And this took place over 14 weeks from January to April of this year. So very, very fresh information. So they wanted to see uh, and identify every breakthrough infection, including asymptomatic infections among their healthcare workers. And it was a matched case control analysis. So what did they see? There were 11, ganun kalaki yung medical center nila, no? they had 11,453 healthcare workers. They were doing uh, PCR tests whenever the healthcare worker would be have been exposed or would have any symptom. And among this, they only saw 39 breakthrough cases or 2.6%. And um, uh, the characteristics of the healthcare workers who uh, developed this breakthrough uh, infections were mostly nurses, people who were coming in and out of the wards, like the maintenance workers, some allied health professionals and physicians. The uh, average age was 42 years old and there was some uh, increase in the incidence among women, okay? The median interval from the second vaccine dose was 39 days. And only one person uh, was infected who had immunosuppression. San kaya nakuha yung infection? No? You would usually ask, where did the healthcare worker get the infection? So the Israel group um, described the breakthrough infection origins mostly from unvaccinated persons around the healthcare workers who were already fully vaccinated. So 57% got it from an unvaccinated household member like children or other household members who were still unvaccinated. And 30% got them from unvaccinated fellow yung colleagues, no? fellow healthcare workers or patients. And um, they were able to track seven healthcare workers who were linked to a patient who had the alpha variant. At the time kasi, uh, alpha variant pa yung predominant in Israel. Okay. And again, when they describe the severity of the symptoms, 67% were mild and the rest were asymptomatic. So very, very mild. No? Kung meron man, mild mostly non-required hospitalization, and the most common symptoms were upper respiratory congestion, myalgia, loss of smell or taste, and 21% reported fevers or rigors. What happened to them? So uh, it said that uh, 31 after the 14 days, some still had residual symptoms. Uh, 
uh, one-fifth actually reported having the long COVID-19 symptoms, so prolonged loss of smell, persistent cough, fatigue, weakness, dyspnea, or myalgia. Uh, uh, one-fourth of the, those who had the infection actually had to take a leave of more than 10 days, longer than the isolation period that we recommend. And there was one worker who was not able to return despite six weeks of leave. So ang conclusion nila was, <clears throat> oh, the variants of concern, as I said, mostly were uh, alpha variant because at that time, 94.5% of the Israeli uh, samples had uh, the alpha variant. So ang conclusion nila was uh, the Pfizer vaccine for them was extremely effective and they actually called kasi 2.6% in this particular healthcare worker population uh, that the breakthrough infections were rare in incidence. But of course, they sort of give us a challenging situation because many are mild or asymptomatic and may pose a risk for vulnerable populations in a medical health facility. Okay, now going to... Siyempre, tatanungin nyo, eh, paano naman yung sa, sa uh, hindi gumagamit ng Pfizer or the other, they call it first world country vaccines. Uh, in, <clears throat> if you look at the more recent um, news, news items from Israel, they've been identifying that breakthrough infections can maybe more severe, no? in sicker patients, in older patients, in patients with the comorbidities. So that's something to keep in mind. And so that's something to make us again, always more vigilant for our vulnerable populations. Oh, yeah. Ito na talaga. Pupunta na tayo sa Indonesia. So we've been hearing this since around the end of May to early June, how Indonesia was like just swamped with so many um, cases of COVID-19. And we heard about why hundreds and hundreds of uh, vaccinated healthcare workers actually came down with the breakthrough infections. No? So um, actually, um, if you, or maybe I didn't find them, but I tried to look for them. There was only one case report so far and uh, of uh, how it was that um, Sinovac uh, recipients would anyway end up with breakthrough infections. And um, this uh, letter to the editor published in this uh, particular journal tried to tell us that uh, when they measured the antibody responses of this particular infected healthcare worker, there was a decline in the antibody response at the time that uh, she had the um, SARS infection, SARS-CoV infection. So um, in conclusion for that Indonesian um, paper, the possible factors for breakthrough infections included uh, maybe lack of immune response from different kinds of populations receiving the vaccines and the uh, occurrence of uh, variants of concern in the country. Ayan, but then it is the Philippines. No? So, the so Philippines so far, I really have uh, only healthcare worker data from the Philippine General Hospital. Uh, this is our epidemiologic curve of uh, what's been happening to healthcare workers through the 18 months that we've been fighting the COVID 19 as a referral center. So, Marin kami talagang naging surge very recently when the August month came about. And um, this is the number of healthcare worker breakthrough infections we've had so far. Um, and that amounts to about uh, 71% of all the COVID, case, COVID infections we've had with healthcare workers. Uh, this one we did last night we completed this uh, data collection and infographic last night this is not healthcare worker these are our current patients in pgh and um in the first uh, set of dots we were trying to represent uh, persons who were fully vaccinated sila yung green 
partially vaccinated, they are represented here as yellow dots, and the unvaccinated as red dots. And you would see na yung green did not proceed um, to the intubated, uh, critically ill intubated COVID cases. So meron din COVID critical, pero um, as far as we know, as of this morning, they are um, sort of okay and hanging in there. Um, the ones that really become very, very sick are the unvaccinated or the partially vaccinated individuals who proceed to being critically guarded and intubated. So segue lang ako to saying that our information here in the Philippines is not yet complete enough for a large um, uh, completed studies kasi ginagawa pa lang natin sila. So we've uh, started to organize ourselves to have this uh, vaccine effectiveness or Philippine VE project. There's a lot of people um, who will be part of this all over the country. And we're going to look at how the vaccines may be the key to end the COVID-19 pandemic. So ang titignan namin would be a real-world vaccine effectiveness uh, data. We will be collecting them in the next uh, 12 months. And um, the project will be trying to estimate effectiveness of the COVID-19 vaccines amidst all of the different vaccines we've been using in the Philippines. Uh, we're already on our third month by um, September to October. So siguro, kung iimbitahin niyo ako uli at makakabigay na ako ng more uh, complete data on this. And the project design is a prospective cohort of 12 sites. Uh, more or less, this VE project will look at two arms. There will be antibody testing or immunosurveillance. This is not to say na people should go around getting their antibody levels. This is We recommend this only as part of a research or a clinical study. And the other arm would be looking at COVID-19 surveillance. Exactly, sino ba yung symptomatic at saka sino, sino yung nagkakaroon ng asymptomatic infection. Um, so uh, for PGH, we've started to do the antibody test, but again, under a clinical study setting and looking at the incidence of COVID-19 hospitalization and death among PGH uh, healthcare workers between vaccinated versus unvaccinated individuals. So this is already my last, second to the last slide, but I hope through all of the slides, I've been able to show you through the experiences of the USA, the UK, Israel, Indonesia, and a little bit from the healthcare workers in PGH, that COVID-19 vaccines are effective, but many factors really come into play and that uh, make us uh, more prone to uh, breakthrough infections, including host factors like comorbidities, our immune responses, situation factors like exposures, uh, use of protection, and virus factors like the presence of variants of concern, and of course, the uh, properties of the vaccines that we use. Okay, that's it. So, kasama ang sambayan ng Pilipino laban sa COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you very much for listening to me. We hope that you learned as much as we did from that excellent presentation. We also hope that you will join us every Friday from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Manila time on Zoom, Facebook, or YouTube. So stay safe, stay connected, and, and see, see you online. online.